Romans chapter 1, verses 16, as follows. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest to them for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world is clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for corruptible man and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Claiming to and exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up to, unto lusts of their hearts, to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So let's talk about what is this text saying. So the Apostle Paul, he's writing to the Roman church, and they obviously each church has their own issues and the Apostle Paul is trying to focus on a couple different points so the first thing he points out is that Christians are to go and they're to be unashamed about the gospel so Christianity is all about Jesus Christ and we should be willing to faithfully go out and talk to people about Jesus Christ so the Apostle Paul emphasizes that true Christians are going to be evangelical that means they're going to go out and they're going to evangelize the second point that Paul makes is that we are, to, we are to be justified by faith alone. We are not justified, we're not made right with God by the Virgin Mary or the Catholic Church. We're made right by Jesus Christ alone. That's why he says, from faith to faith. And then the third point that we see that the Apostle Paul emphasizes is that God is angry against sin. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. See, our sin provokes God to judgment. And when we're, honest with our, when we're honest with ourselves, we understand that if God is perfect and we're imperfect, then there's going to be a broken relationship. There's going, to be, there's going to be enmity with us and God. And that's precisely what Paul is emphasizing here, is that we have a, we have a broken relationship because of our sin. And so Paul goes on to say that we know God in our heart of hearts. We look at creation. We know there's a creator. God has revealed himself to us in, in our consciences, knowing right from wrong, in creation and in Jesus Christ in the most magnificent way. And see, the Apostle Paul says that we've exchanged the glory of God for creation, for things that have been created. It's the great exchange. We have put up things that God has created that are good, and we've made them more important than God. And instead of, instead of doing exactly what God created us to do, which is to glorify Him, to love Him, to, to be all about God, our reason for living is to be God, but instead we've made other things more important than God. We've lifted up idols. And the Apostle Paul talks about the creation, putting the Creator in, in, in opposition or in, in, um, put under those things that God has created and we have made those things more important than God. In other words, we, we've put things that God has created up on a pedestal and exchanged the glory that God should have and gave it to things that God created. And so what is God telling us here in this passage? He's telling us that we are, we are without an excuse before God and that's why we need a Redeemer. We need to be forgiven for our sins and the Bible says Jesus Christ is that, that one and only Redeemer that has come so that we might have life. The Bible has a very famous passage. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have eternal life, going to heaven and being with God. 
Now, what does this passage mean? See, many people, they quote John 3, 16, and they have no idea what it means. Or if they do have an idea, it's just, it's going to be a superficial understanding of this, uh, of the, the intensity and the magnitude of what John 3.16 is teaching. So what is John 3.16 teaching? What, what, what is the amazing good news of Jesus Christ? Who is this glorious one spoken of in the Old Testament and the New that Christians always talk about? Well, what does Jesus say? In John 3.16, he identifies who the Son is himself as very God and very man, and that he came to redeem a people, to rescue them from their sin. So let's go through. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. For God. Theon. God so loved the world. He, he abundantly loved the world. He exceedingly loved the world. That word, that word love, agapao, it, it is an intimacy with God. It's not simply a love that is superficial or mamby-pamby, just uh, touchy-feely. It is, it is a love that goes beyond just the mere emotions. It's a love that is, is after the goodness of another. It's giving oneself for another, the good of another. So it's that type of goodness, that kind of love that we're talking about here. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That term, only one, it, it actually in reference means the unique one. Jesus is the unique son of God, very God and very man. So loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him, constantly exercising faith in him, trusting in him, not trusting in your good works or trusting in what you do, but trusting what Jesus Christ has done, should not perish. That means should not eternally be separated from God because of judgment, because of their sin, but should have everlasting life. Go to heaven and be with God. So if I could summarize what John 3.16 is teaching us, it's teaching us that we are messed up people that God has come to redeem and that we are called as His creatures to turn away from our, our, our trying to get right with God on our own terms and we are to submit to Him that we can only be right with God by His terms and that's through Jesus Christ. Christianity is not about do's and don'ts. It's about what God has done in Jesus Christ. See, in the pagan religions in, in the centuries past, it was all about, for example, the Romans. The Romans would say, you must go to the temple. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. In, in, the, in, the, Roman, in the Roman pagan religions, what did the Romans do? The Romans said, you got to go to the temple. You go to the temple and then you do your sacrifice, right? And that, that, is, the, that is the constant view of all religion. The common theme is that you can, you can earn your way to heaven by your deeds. And you can't, sir. That's the problem because you're imperfect just like me. You can't save yourself. None of us can save ourselves because if we try and offer a sacrifice to God, it's still imperfect because the sacrifice is coming from an imperfect heart. And see, the Romans and all the other pagan religions in the past thought that they can get right with God by going to a temple, by offering a sacrifice. But here's the, here's the significance of Christianity. Christianity came to destroy not only the temple and also destroy the sacrifice. He destroyed all of religion because that's what religion was built upon was the temple and the religious sacrifice. And Jesus said, nope, that, can't, that cannot save you. Why? Because He is the temple. He is the sacrifice. We have to understand that Jesus See, God doesn't want our sacrifice because our sacrifice is imperfect. God Himself had to become the sacrifice. God Himself became the sacrifice that we might be reconciled to God through Him. That's the good news of Jesus Christ, is that God Himself is the sacrifice. In pagan religions, you would have to offer up blood sacrifices to God. Well, see, Christianity says that God Himself, He, pour, he poured out His own blood that we might be forgiven. He that knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God through faith in Him. So, what I'm getting at is that religion cannot save you. And Christianity, Christianity says, religion can't save you, and denying religion cannot save you. It, it's a third way. It's in the Gospel. It's in Jesus Christ. Understanding that it's all of grace. It's not of works. It's, it's no one can boast. It's not anything that you can do to, to, 
by your own exertion, by your own will, by your own strength. It's only about what Jesus has done. It's only by Him can we be forgiven. I hope you see how amazing the gospel is, is that we can't save ourselves, but God entered into time and space to save us, to, to change our hearts, to, to transform us and make us right before Him, to reconcile us to Himself. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, what I've, what I've spoken of for, for approximately five minutes is that that scripture can't be isolated. We need to understand what does it mean. And in the original language, it's saying that we are messed up people. We are imperfect. See, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, that ye are to be perfect at, as God, your heavenly Father, is perfect. And see, none of us can measure up to perfection. When we look at our hearts and compare it to God, none of us are perfect. We lie. We haven't loved God as we should. We haven't loved our neighbor as we should. We can always do more. We can always be better. And see, that's exactly what God is saying, that when He says, for the wages of sin is death, and He says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, that's exactly what that's what that's teaching is that we're messed up people and we need to be forgiven we need to be saved we need a savior and jesus christ is that savior he says that he is the one jesus said i am the way i am the truth and i am the life no man comes to the father but by me jesus taught and he continues to testify that he is the only means to god and we are to to, to turn away from our our idolatry our selfishness and turn to Jesus Christ that we might be forgiven because Jesus Jesus is the infinite God man he is the one that God has provided as the sacrifice to forgive us to save us to heal us to deliver us from our from our own selfishness from our hard-heartedness from our pride from our, our joylessness from our depravity it's only in Jesus Christ see God created us with a purpose we were not we were not here be left to ourselves to figure out this on our own. God has revealed Himself to us in the most magnificent way in the Bible and in Jesus Christ Himself. And so God has made Himself known. He has shown us His goodness. In the cross of Jesus Christ, we see God's justice. See, Jesus Christ, He died upon the cross. Jesus was very God and very man. That was His identity. And see, we see the magnitude of our sin and the severity of it because it took very God. God Himself had to die on that cross. God Himself had to die on that cross because that's how horrible sin is. That it, that it demanded an infinite sacrifice. And the only sacrifice that was sufficient to satisfy the sin that we have, we have accrued, the sin that we have committed, the sin that we continue to commit, the daily, the daily failings, the daily messes up, the, the daily mess ups that we, that we commit, the only way that that could be satisfied was by God Himself sacrificing Himself on the cross, paying the penalty for our sins, and to purchase a place in heaven for us. And so we see the justice of God, Jesus dying in our place, taking the wrath of God upon Himself, but we also see God's love. We see God's love that He's willing to die in our place, on our behalf. So we can go to God without fear, without doubt, without insecurity because of who in Jesus Christ is and what He did. That He, he, he is very God and very man and that He died an infinite, an infinite sacrifice, infinite worth to purchase us, to rescue us from our sins, that we might have a right relationship with God. Now what is God calling us to do? To turn from our selfish hearts and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Christianity is not about what you can do, it's about what Christ has done. In other words, we do, not, we do not follow Christianity because it makes God love us. God loves us despite our wickedness and despite our sinfulness, and He's calling us to turn away from those things and to trust in Jesus Christ, trust in what He has done. We can only be made righteous by Jesus Christ, what He did on the cross. We cannot be loved because of something that we do. God is not a means to an end. We don't, we don't follow Jesus Christ because then we're going to get to heaven. Jesus Christ is our delight. 
He is our heaven. He is our, he is our focus. He is our glory. He is our temple. He is our sacrifice. He is our life. He is our joy. He is our strength. He is our security. He is our righteousness. Jesus Christ is everything that you hope you hope you have and all the fulfillment you're seeking for, only Jesus Christ can sustain and fulfill. Why is that? God created us for eternity. And if you're trying to find your meaning, purpose, and value in temporal things, in trying to get approval from your neighbor, trying to get power, trying to get, trying to get achievements, getting a job promotion, those things are good. Trying to get money, but what happens? You make these things that God created and you make them more important than God. You make them gods themselves. You treat them as though they were gods. And what happens? It shows your heart that you, you're, you're living for the temporal things that are not going to be able to satisfy that heart for eternity, going beyond this life. And see, Jesus Christ is calling us back to God himself, saying that, you know what? You're trying to live for yourself and it's not going to be able to sustain, it's not gonna meet those expectations that you, you, you're seeking and that you're piling high on. What you need to do is you need to acknowledge what Jesus says, is that we're messed up people and he came so that we can have forgiveness of sins, so that we can have eternal life. Not by what you do, but what, what he has done. So don't trust in what you're doing, trust in what Jesus Christ has God, what Jesus Christ has done, very God and very man. If you, want, if you want an emphasis of what I've been saying is this, is that we cannot be justified by what we do. We can only be justified by what God has done, which is sacrificed himself so that he can rescue us from our sins. See, our sins deserve God's punishment. We understand that there's going to be a day of reckoning. God is going to judge the wicked. We know that in our heart of hearts that there is going to be ultimate justice. There may not be justice right now in this life, there may be people that get get away. That may get they may they may actually be able to they may be able to flee away from the country and not be held liable for their crimes. But see, the Bible says that God is going to hold everyone accountable for their misdeeds, for their wrongdoing. That's because God is a good God and He's going to punish the wicked. But see, we we cannot go just from just just say that God's going to punish the wicked because what we do is we paint a picture that allows us off the hook. We paint a picture that. It's us versus them. And that's exactly what many of us do, is we focus on other people and we don't focus on ourselves. I'm the first to admit that I'm messed up. And that's why Jesus is so important, is that we are all messed up, we're imperfect. We all have sinfulness. And I'm not out here to cast the first stone, I'm actually simply out here telling you about what Jesus Christ has done for me and what he promises any of us can find forgiveness of sins in him that we need to acknowledge that we are imperfect and Christ is perfect and that Christ has sacrificed himself, the perfect for the imperfect, the just for the unjust, the righteous for the unrighteous, the beautiful for the ugly. That's the great exchange that the Bible talks about, that Jesus Christ became a substitute to die the penalty we deserve because of our sin. He took that upon himself. He took that punishment so that we can walk free, so we can be forgiven, so we can go to heaven and be with God. That's how loving God is, that God is willing to go the infinite degree, to, take, to be the ultimate sacrifice. Love immeasurable, love so amazing that it's willing to die, die on, on your behalf. That's how amazing God is, that Jesus Christ, God, the epitome of love, is willing to, to sacrifice himself on our behalf so that you may have eternal life, that you may go to heaven and be with God. Despite your sinfulness, despite the wrongdoings that you've done, you can be forgiven. Though, you're, though, your, sins make you, though your sins make you ugly and you find yourself in shame and guilt and doubt, Jesus Christ says, He can make you beautiful. He can, he can make you no longer shameful. He can remove your guilt. He can remove that stain of sin and make you righteous. Though you, though you be sinful, you may be forgiven and may be cleansed and become righteous before God because of what Jesus Christ has done. You may feel like you're unloved, but the Bible says that, that for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him 
should not perish but have everlasting life. God delights in His creation. He loves His creation. He loves mankind. And he, He's demonstrated it by coming down to rescue us from ourselves, to rescue us from our sins by His death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ, very God and very man. The love of God was demonstrated by God coming down for sinful men to rescue them that are unable to rescue themselves. That those who are sinful might become the righteousness of God. The Bible says in Galatians, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. As it is written, Cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. What, is, what does this mean? This means that, that Jesus Christ, he came because we cannot, we cannot earn our way to heaven by the deeds of the law, by working, by following the laws in the Old Testament. We can't get right with God by doing that because those laws, number one, were never intended for Gentiles. And number two, no amount of good works is going to be able to take away your guilt. No amount of good deeds are going to be able to take away your sinfulness before God. Why? Because even though you may try to live good and live a good life, you're still tainted with imperfection. And Jesus tells us that God is perfect. And none of us can meet that standard. That's why Jesus Christ came. The perfect came to substitute himself for the imperfect. Jesus Christ, very God and very man, suffered and died upon the cross to pay the penalty for our sins and to purchase a place in heaven for us. <coughs> That's the good news of Jesus Christ. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to let my brother here, he's going to take over. I'll be preaching here in a little bit, but please think about what we're talking about. Some of you may be thinking that we're out here just to, uh, ju just to, just for self-glory, and that's not what we're here for at all. We're here for Christ's glory. We want to magnify Him, make Him known about His gloriousness, that you might find forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ alone.